What's going on, guys? We are here to talk about K Corp, present day K Corp versus Spring Vitality. Who were the bigger favorites going into their major? Obviously, K Corp are huge favorites going in to this major, but were they bigger favorites? Or are they bigger favorites than what Spring Vitality was about to do in Spring? Obviously, Vitality, they went on to win that tournament. We don't know what's going to happen with K Corp, but we will find out. So, I'm going to break it down with some numbers. And to do that, we're going to the PowerPoint slide, baby. Here we go. We're back. We're back. This is premier YouTube content. Let's do it. I'm ready. I hope you're excited because... Whenever I bring out the PowerPoint, I bet 20% of people just click off immediately. So let's do it. For the 80% of you that are left, that's probably too high of a number. Let's break it down. So, oh, I misspelled K Corp. Really? Really? You know what? We're not going back. We're going to continue. Spring Vitality versus present day Carmen's Corp. I'm not doing it again. We're going right into it. Bigger favorite going into their major. Let's break it down. Okay. So their records are actually incredibly close on what they did. Spring Vitality, obviously a completely different format. Double elimination brackets. They didn't have to play through the open quals, all of that. So in terms of the records, which we'll get into, I only compared the main event portion of the tournament for that. Um... But yeah, so let's break down. First off, three regional wins for both, in case you forgot. Both of them had the perfect split. Uh, then we owned a match of Spring Vitality 15 and 1 in matches. They only lost in one grand finals to K Corp, but then they bounced right back and beat them in the bracket reset. Um, that was, I believe, qualifier two or regional two. Don't, oh man, they're trying to make me say qualifiers. No, regional two of Spring. Um, so 15 and 1 in matches, fantastic record for Vitality. K Corp went 18 and 0 in their matches, but they did lose once in the double elimination portion, which also lowered their seed, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, so they went 18 and 0 perfect in the main event, but yes, they also kind of had one loss too. So pretty equal across the board there. Then also you got to look at sh strength of victory, right? Of like who they actually played. In Swiss, I would think you would actually have a harder road normally because you have to play like the top, top teams uh, like earlier in the tournament, and then you might have to do it again in the bracket. And that didn't really hold true necessarily. They played exactly 11 times versus the top five of Europe on both sides. Vitality went 10-1. and one. And those are all their records right there. I kind of wanted to write them out so you could see uh, when they had close matches or not. They really only had one close match, honestly. And that was that, or I'm sorry, two. There was two four threes. Um, one was against Liquid. I can't remember what the other one was, honestly. Uh, but that was their final in the first one. So whoever that was. But I don't have it on me right now because we're just doing the PowerPoint at this point. So they have basically two close matches, but because they lost one match where they lost one to four, um, it drops their win rate down. Uh, so they went 40 and 18 versus the top five in Europe. A pretty nice win rate all in all. Um, on the other side, you have K Corp, who went 11 and 0 versus the top five teams. Obviously, they one loss to Sa in the double uh, Elam portion, but their matches were a lot closer. So they had, what is that, one four three or two four threes, so two game sevens. One of those was that uh, a reverse sweep and all that, but both were against BDS. Um, they had a ton of three twos. Those were all in qualifier two when they were that very low seed, but they did play three teams that were all top five in Europe in all three of their rounds. They did win them all, but they were all very close, three two, three two, three two. They then went on in that bracket, to again play three top five teams in Europe and still won every single match in their tournament, which is insane. Every single match they had was against a top five European team, and they still won it. They still won every single one. One of those, again, was that 4-3, and then they kind of cleaned it up a little bit in the back half, 
four one four zero four two in qualifier number three, which leads to a forty one and eighteen record. Another very nice win rate if you round them both. One was rounded up, one was rounded down. I'll let you math experts figure out which one is technically higher. It's not that hard, uh, but pretty much identical, right? Across the board, the one thing is Vitality is the one blemish, but K-Corp's matches were closer. So right now you're like, I'm not sure who to pick, right? Let's move on to the intangibles. And this is where if you have any extras, and I forgot to uh, get rid of the uh, bubble on one of them. If you have any extra intangibles that you can think of going into this tournament, let me know. Because I was kind of trying to think about, like, what would sway my vote either way. Um, and I probably, you know, just didn't think of a couple things. So let me know in the comments below. But Spring Vitality, they got a very weak North American Spring regional performance from the entire region, right? It was, it was bad. It was bad. It was, you know, a lot of teams were just like, very close race for top five, but like teams were not playing as well. FaZe didn't even make it, who made it to the finals last time. Gen G barely made it in. Space Station was the number one seed with not even that good of a record. It was just like like it was a mess. So you kind of figured going into spring that NA was not gonna be that strong. Then on the flip side, they did have the harder major. They had five European teams there, five NA teams. The one difference in the major is basically, if you compare uh, EU5 to MENA2, very comparable teams. They finished exactly the same at the World Championship. You like, I, you could probably say MENA2 slight favorites there, but it's an argument, right? There is definitely an argument, so we'll say those are equal. Then you have number five in NA versus an SSA. Clearly, SSA is better, so we don't have to... No. 5NA obviously clears uh, SSA. So, and to be fair, in spring, that was Gen G who went the furthest, right? So, it's not always the weakest NA team necessarily, right? So, the fifth NA squad will definitely put up a bigger fight. It's the same with EU, too, where, like, there's more wiggle room for a European team to get in and then pop off, right? It's just another team that could pop off. Um, so definitely the harder major, uh, but it was the first land for Zen. So no one really knew exactly what was going to happen. Most people were like, eh, it probably doesn't really matter, but I just wanted to put that out there. The last one, which I think is very important is it was a North American land. Now home field advantage might not be incredibly strong, but I still feel like there is a strength to having the major in your region. It's just a little easier to travel to. It's a little easier to get comfortable because you're used to everything. I still think that matters slightly. Again, it's up to you to determine how much these intangibles matter to you because uh, I want to know who you think is a bigger favorite. So I would say weekend A springs a positive, harder majors a negative, first land for Zen, Probably really doesn't matter, honestly. And then an NA land, I would say, was a slight negative for Vitality. On the flip side, you go to K Corp. The long off season basically just means a ton of super teams came out of like all the other regions. We're not clear on who is necessarily better than who. So it leaves a little bit of a gray area. I think most people expect Europe to be better than everyone still. But it leads to a little bit of a gray area, which leads to the dominant teams in NA, MENA, SAM, and OCE. There's been teams that, like, formed these really, really strong rosters, and then they actually performed like that. MENA has Falcons, SAM has Furia, uh, OCE has Power, NA has Gen G and G2. So, like, the consolidation of Power was definitely a good thing, and it's going to make it a much harder major you would say for k corp now the weaker major argument is the argument of the 5na versus ssa right ssa is not winning this tournament we already know that sorry ssa it's not happening so yes it's weaker in terms of we don't get that extra team there for na or for europe 
But because of the dominant teams, and then they mean the Sam and OC that actually have a better chance to win it all. Well, at, outside of OC, sorry, Power. Uh, but uh, and they mean and Sam. I would say honestly, it might be a harder measure than what Vitality had to do. Because also, by the time spring comes around for Vitality, you already kind of know where teams lie, right? For the most part, uh, how good these teams are. You know, there's some roster moves here or there. But still, in general, um, on their roster, experience land winners, you have Vatir and Rise as well. Um, so first land for Zen versus experience land winners. I think that edge goes to K-Corp. Um, and then it's an EU land, which, again, I think is slightly positive. I'm not saying it's huge, but I would say it's slightly positive. So let's break it down one last time in terms of intangibles of who is better where. Long off season. Versus the weak NA spring. Vitality. Huge edge. Huge edge there. I would say that made that spring major a little bit weaker. It comes back a tiny bit because it's a harder major because of the 5 NA and 5 Europe. But I still think what K Corp is going to have to do at this major is going to be more difficult than what Vitality did. I think there's more competition at the top. Than there was. Now, a lot of that is unknown because you just don't know how good these other regions are compared to the world, compared to Europe, compared to K Court. But that unknown makes it scarier to say if they're favorites or not. Experience, though, lies completely on K Corp side compared to Spring Vitality. And the EU land favors K Corp over Spring Vitality. It's funny because like halfway through this conversation, I've been back and forth, right? Like I thought I was going to be like, oh, yeah. So I'm definitely going to go like that K Corp is the bigger favorite. But I think that dominant teams in NA, Mina, Sam, and OC, um, I think that sways me. I think that does sway me. I think Vitality... We're the bigger favorites. I'm going to say it. I think Vitality were the bigger favorites going into spring than present day K Corp going into this major. I'm not saying it's by a lot, but because of how weak North America looked versus the dominance of these teams that made roster moves after a long off season. So again, player skill level is going to change and you like you don't reset that Europe is the best region in the world, but it could lead to a couple extra questions. Um, I think because of the dominant teams in North America, Mina and Sam, I think they're going to put up a fight, a bigger fight. Um, yeah, I'm going to say Spring Vitality were the bigger favorites. If you had to like go on paper, if you had to bet it, Spring Vitality, I think were bigger favorites than present day K Corp. The EU land should benefit them, but supposedly the blue wall is not going to be there. There's still going to be tons of K Corp fans, so I'm not really like that concerned about that. Um, but yeah, I think Spring Vitality were slightly bigger favorites than the present day K Corp. What do you guys think? Uh, well, obviously, if you're fans of NA, you're probably going to agree with me, um, but I could like easily see that argument that K Corp are bigger favorites because of. Their 18-0 split versus the top five in Europe. They dominated. Um, so let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We're going to do a lot of finals recaps coming up over this next week or so. So get ready for those from all different regions. And, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you next time.